I'll answer any questions now if anybody has any. Yes, I see one in the back. Herman. Can you explain a little bit more what you meant by this net metering? Yeah, Herman's asked if I could explain a little bit more about net metering. Okay, yeah. Uh, typically where we're going to see this is uh, if we've got a member out here south of town and they decide that they would like to put in their own generation. The laws allow them to use renewable sources of generation on the system. And they can go in parallel with the electric system. That means they can just hook right in and it's tied into our electric system. If it's renewables, that would be wind, solar, oh, there's bio, gas, uh, hydroelectric would fit into there. There's a few others sources. So they can hook right to the system. They're going to generate their own electricity. No issues with that. Hook into the system as long as they meet all the safety requirements and the systems uh, meet you well under other laboratory specs, they can hook up. have no issues with that. And what happens with net metering is uh, if the wind doesn't blow, you're buying electricity from the electric system. You're hooked up. And the meter runs forward. All of a sudden the wind starts blowing, the wind blows hard, you're not using that much electricity. So the, we'll call it a wind turbine, it's generating all the electricity you need and more. Where's that and more going to go? Well, it's going to go back to the electric system. So at that point in time, the meter wants to go backwards. And the net metering advocates want that to happen. They want to let the meter go backwards. And then the wind quits blowing and start using electricity, and the meter goes forward again. And the wind starts blowing, the meter goes backwards. Theoretically, easily, you could get yourself to a zero position at the end of the month. You could have used electricity from the system when you needed it, from, from Heartland, and then you would have generated your own when the wind was blowing and generated enough to roll back off everything that you bought from Heartland. Does anybody see the problem right here? Heartland's still providing power and not getting paid for anything. Huge issue. Because if enough people did that, guess who pays the bill? The people who don't have wind turbines. And that's how it works. That's why we're so concerned. There's a subsidy inside of that. If there's just a few of them, it's not a big deal. You know, I think Angie put up, we had, I don't know, $18 million of revenue or something for the year. And if somebody nets out $750 a year, that's a drop in a bucket of 18 million bucks. I kind of stand on the principle of it. It bothers me on the principle. I don't think it's right that other people should be paid for someone else's game. It's a have, have not game. That's basically how it works. There are some mechanisms that we can put in place. We're working with the legislature here in Kansas. There's a net metering piece of the energy bill that's been passed by both houses up there right now. It's going to go to the governor's desk. And we can live with that. We think it'll be okay. We need to give people the opportunity to generate their electricity if they want to. I think that's a great thing. We just got to make sure it works right. Yes, sir. We, we can discuss this subject before now. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. And try to make it simple, cost effective. And again, you know, I'm sorry, I don't know if anybody, everybody heard that, but uh, Herman was mentioning early on when we were talking about that meter, there would be two meters one meter that measures when you're using electricity, and one meter that measures when you're sending electricity back out. And that, that arrangement's by law right now. We already have that in the parallel generation statute or something like that. And that's what we use. But the real net metering just takes it down to one meter, it runs forward, and it runs backwards. I believe the dual meter is fair for both of us. Yeah, it makes more sense. Problem you know, net metering, one last thing. I don't want to bore you on this, but this is a big issue with net metering. Uh, our cost of power is highest on July 22nd, 7 o'clock in the evening, when it's 105 degrees. It costs a lot of money for electricity on that particular point in time right now. And what we buy at that level is going to influence what we're going to pay the next eight months of the year. Because we're going to have to pay based on that high level that we set right there. Well, a lot of times on July 22nd at 7 p.m. when it's 105 degrees, the wind's not blowing. So everybody with wind turbines are using electricity. And they're contributing to this high peak on the Harvard system. Wind likes to blow at night. Not very many people are using a lot of electricity at night. So you're wanting to dump energy back in the system at night when not very many people want that energy at that point in time. You know, so there's a lot of imbalance here that goes on.
Technology will address that. It's going to take several years, but we'll get over that hump right there. Anything else? Anybody else have any questions? Yes, Kelly Wright. Back in the 1920s, early 30s, they had generators on all these other dams on the river. Why didn't the department do something about that? The question was, it was a long time ago, in the 20s and 30s, there were generators little on all the dams in the rivers. You know, why doesn't Heartland put those back? Cost effectiveness is one issue. Uh, it's hard to find the head, which is the, uh, the feet of water above your, your turbine that you can generate. That's, that's a difficult thing to find, to get the flow of water down in our area. Now, there is quite a bit of generation you know, over here in Missouri as you go around in Oklahoma and you know, in several states right there. But finding the drop of water is the big issue. And it just isn't economical. There's, there's two things. It's the, it's the cost of the install is so high. And water isn't as available now as it was back then, too. Because there's so many uses of the irrigation and people using water and everything. But there's the, the cost of the installation. And then you also got to you know, build power lines to it to get back into the system. It sounds good. I wish it would, uh, we could make that work better, and maybe in the future. The interesting thing, though, in the bigger picture right now, is we're talking about climate change and how we're going to reduce greenhouse gases, yet we are dismantling dams at a great rate in the nation. It makes no sense to me. Zero emissions, and yet we're dismantling hydroelectric facilities. Got to save the salmon. Any other questions? Okay, well, I appreciate your time. Thank you.